today we are going to talk about isolation of collagen collagen as we talked previously collagen is a protein which is of amino acids like glycine and proline are the two amino acid that is made out of uh, collagen so collagen is a most abundant protein of a human body and it is found in the connective tissues like tendons the ligaments the bones and the skin is all made out of collagen so isolation of the collagen usually follows four basic steps the first one is what we call is preparation because in order to extract collagen from tendon we have to prepare the particular solution first from which we have to do the extraction so preparation is the first step followed by the extraction and then we have the purification and the reformation extraction usually can be performed by three basic salt precipitation acid isolation and the enzyme precipitation so this is what we are going to stress on in this video lecture also the last two which is the purification and reformation purification is done by cation exchange chromatography and reformation is also what we going to study next so before we go into salt precipitation the basic idea behind salt precipitation is given in this little picture that you can see on the screen here first of all we have to make a solution a solution of collagen with the salt and water but in this case you can see the concentration of the salt is very less so the collagen and the water will get dissolved but when we increase the concentration of the salt we will see that collagen being hydrophobic will get precipitated at the center and will be surrounded by water and salt on all the direction dialysis we use a dialysis bag where we keep the collagen solution inside it and when there is an equilibrium maintenance at equilibrium when concentration solution is both at equilibrium we will see that the salt and water will come out and leaving behind the collagen accumulated inside the collagen uh, inside the dialysis bag and these are the three basic steps on how the collagen uh, extraction is usually taking place the first one is salt precipitation acid isolation and enzyme precipitation the first one is salt precipitation this slide will help you all to relate to the everything very easily and learn and remember the steps so salt precipitation firstly the stipple the tendon is uh, dissolved in disodium phosphate and then it is centrifuged and once it is centrifuged the supernatant is then collected and the pellet is discarded because the supernatant has the collagen inside it then we are going to do the salting out mechanism we using the nacl which we just studied right now the salting out mechanism where by increasing the concentration of the salt we are precipitating the particular collagen because of its hydrophobic nature in the middle so this is the salting out mechanism that we studied right now and finally we are going to do the dialysis that this is the dialysis where the collagen gets collected inside the dialysis bag next one is the acid isolation acid isolation over here just that in solid pre salt precipitation we had the so disodium phosphate here in the acid we are going to use acetic acid and edta edta is used as an antimicrobial because effect because like um, in the in the uh, tendons there may be biofilm biofilm are basically the microbes or maybe some other bacterial contamination so these biofilm uh, to remove these biofilm we use edta also edta acts as a good chelating agent and then we are going to uh, continue the same step as we did in salt precipitation the collection of the supernatant by centrifugation and salting out with nacl but in acid isolation we are not going to perform dialysis and then if you have understood the acid and the salt precipitation the enzyme precipitation will be very easy for you all to understand because enzyme precipitation is a continuation or the combination of these two first enzyme precipitation we are going to start with the salt precipitation method this first step is salt precipitation that is the tendon with disodium hypophosphate so see disodium hypophosphate then we are going to go to the acid isolation part where we are going to add acetic acid and edta but in enzyme the uh, the standing key, key create the standing out feature of enzyme precipitation is that we are going to add pepsin pepsin helps in the digestion of some random or the digestion of some tin proteins which is not necessary inside a particular uh, collagen so other proteins can get you know like uh, dissolved or digested using pepsin and then we are going to centrifuge it again and then we are going to do salting out of by NA, uh, nacl 
so we are going to again in this case we are going to do the salt precip precipitation this part where we are going to collect the supernatant and then we are going to do the salting out in NaCl and then we are going to do the dialysis so we begin the enzyme precipitation we begin with the first step of salt precipitation we move up into the acid isolation then in the middle we add pepsin and then again we come back to salt precipitation this is this final step so this is all about the enzyme precipitation and finally the purification of collagen is done by the cation exchange chromatography cation exchange chromatography is a very famous technique because over here we are using beads which are basically the cellulose or the agarose which is the ionized form of carboxymethyl group so we are going to use them as beads in the column and they are usually negatively charged and then we are going to introduce the amino acid of both positively and the negatively charged per amino acid then since positively charged and negatively charged beads will interact with each other they will attract each other so they will the negatively charged and the positively charged will become combined together but the negatively charged amino acid will come out of the column i repeat again so if it is very difficult for you all to understand the principle behind the cation exchange chromatography is that first of all we have this particular column the column is usually having the negatively charged beads and then we are adding positively charged and negatively charged amino acids over here and what happens is that this particular amino acid say for example I'm going to uh, give it with green so this is the amino acids the positively charged amino acid gets attracted to the negatively charged amino acid leaving behind the negatively charged amino acid because of electrochemical uh, repulsion they are coming out of the system and this is how the cation exchange chromatography is taking place and a very good thing about cation exchange chromatography is that this cation exchange chromatography is uh, collagen separation it's helping in collagen separation and we can design a cation exchange chromatography in such a way that collagen because we know that collagen is positive at pH less than 7 so if we put collagen which is less than pH less than 7 it is positively charged right so neg negatively charged and the positively charged collagen will combine together so the positively charged collagen will stick to the beads and, and the negatively charged unwanted substances will come out of the system and this is how the purification by cation exchange chromatography is usually done and the last one is reconstruction of collagen reconstruction of collagen means that sometimes collagen has a has a tendency to get disrupted or get deformed or get damaged so in this case reconstruction is very important because so many acids are given so many steps are being carried out so it can get destructed so reconstruction is usually done and this reconstruction is uh, done with the help of metal ions that is aluminium zinc and calcium and increasing the pH is usually because the pH of the uh, collagen is about 7.6 so when the uh, pH is less than 7.6 the collagen has a tendency to get damaged so we are going to increase the pH pH to 7.6 and add the metal ions that is calcium aluminium and zinc can help in the reconstruction also in the second step we can do is cross linking cross linking with the help of glutaraldehyde and by several dehydration processes so this this was the entire process of extraction and isolation of collagen. Mm -hmm.